considered as the greatest treasure of Renaissance art, and ironically, one of the few paintings that Leonardo finished. The Mona Lisa has been described as the best known, the most visited, the most sung about, the most parodied work of art in the world, and ultimately the most written about by journalists, art critics, psychologists, scholars, and art enthusiasts, which in turn take up or deny points of view and interpretations. And all of this writing and talking about the painting has created dozens of anecdotes about it and generated nothing but obsessive interest from the public who line up to see the work, usually from afar, and photograph it to post it in this technological era of ours on social media. Let's take a look at the main contributing factors consisting of myths, straight facts, anecdotes, and curiosities which have turned a once look beyond portrait into the world's most famous painting of all time. The author. This is the big first question. Although it is nowadays generally accepted that the author of the painting is Leonardo da Vinci, the painting is actually not signed. Today, everyone agrees that the author is in any case the Tuscan genius and it has been ascertained that already after da Vinci's death, when the painting was finally made public, let's remember that the painting stayed in Leonardo's possession until his passing, there was talks of him as an author. The Identity there are so many questions surrounding the painting that even the very identity of the portrayed woman is still one of the painting's biggest mysteries and main topic of discussion up to this day. Based on the mid-16th century biography of Leonardo da Vinci by Italian historian Giorgio Vasari, the inventor of the very idea of the Renaissance, many historians believe that the painting is a portrait not of a noble woman, as would happen in those times, but of a humble merchant's wife, Lisa del Giocondo, from which derives the alternative name of the painting, La Gioconda. But Vasari published his book 31 years after Leonardo's death, and he was known to also fill in facts with fragments of fantasy. First, he described Mona Lisa having eyebrows, and the one in the Louvre doesn't have him. Secondly, Mona Lisa's husband never owned the painting, as Leonardo kept it with him for the rest of his life. So this main theory isn't considered convincing 100%. Others have put forward alternative theories. Sigmund Freud believed the painting represented a memory of da Vinci's mother, Caterina Butti del Vacca. Some believed it to be Isabella di Aragona, the Duchess of Milan. This was because he had worked as a painter for that family for 11 years. Some even claimed the painting was a depiction of Salai, his favorite student. He was thought to be very close to da Vinci, so close that they were thought to be lovers. The nickname Salai was given to him by da Vinci, an abbreviation of Saladino, little devil in old Italian. So it's very possible that the painting could have represented him and one of the reasons for keeping it secret in those times. Others believe that she is Bianca Giovanna Sforza, the daughter of Ludovico il Moro, an Italian Renaissance nobleman who ruled as Duke of Milan, or Pacifica Brandani, the mistress of Giuliano de' Medici, the third son of Lorenzo the Magnificent and a ruler of Florence. And maybe this could be another of the reasons why he kept it hidden. The last theory is that the woman was simply a figment of da Vinci's imagination and subconscious. The ambiguous smile and look. Mona Lisa's mysterious smile has been the main topic of debate among historians because different people see the smile in different ways based on the angle at which the painting is looked at. Leonardo was skillfully able to do this by not drawing outlines and utilizing soft blending of the colors to create ambiguity in the corners of the mouth and at the corners of the eyes. This painting technique, called sfumato, which means soft in Italian, might have been used in order to achieve this hallucinatory effect. Along with the shading, this explains why she appears to be smiling when the observer does not look directly at her. 
It is still unknown, however, whether this effect was intentional or not. A professor at Harvard argued that the smile is best seen with one's peripheral vision, which is why, when looking at her eyes, her face and smile seem so striking. There is also a claim that based on how you're looking at the painting, particularly with distance, her smile changes into a blank expression. As you can see, there's a lot of other scientific explanations for why different people view the smile differently. Given the painting's alternative title of La Gioconda, which in Italian also means joyful, many suspect that it was Leonardo's intentional idea to base the whole painting around the idea of the smile, making it the central motif of the portrait. Beyond the smile and the look, which is unique in itself, as women in portraits wouldn't normally direct their stare towards the viewer in those times, it's the visual tease of Mona Lisa that makes her simply unique and set her apart from any other painting of its time. The Composition By executing the painting through the so-called sfumato technique, an artistic mean allowing tones and colors to gently blend together and hence producing softened outlines or hazy forms, Leonardo managed to give greater uniformity to the painting by tying, without any visual detachment, the body of the Mona Lisa with the landscape behind her. Mona Lisa portrays a seated female figure sitting upright and sideways in a chair in a three-quarter view. In comparison to the rest of the body, her face and chest are slightly turned towards the viewer, a posture derived from the pyramid image used to depict the sitting Madonna. Her face is surrounded by wavy black hair covered by a light veil. The key element of the face is obviously the famous smile. The clothing is purely 16th century. Her dress is decorated with small spiral motifs at the level of the neckline, leaving her décolleté uncovered. All of these elements, which reveal a complex structure for the portrait, convey the idea of movement. As a matter of fact, the bust, arms, and face rotate in different directions thus avoiding the typical stiffness of portraiture and providing Mona Lisa with an unprecedented vitality and giving eternal energy to her eyes and smile. Eyebrows and Eyelashes Why the Mona Lisa has very pale eyebrows and appears to have no eyelashes is one of the painting's long-standing mysteries. Using a high-definition camera, Pascal Cotte, a French engineer and inventor claims to have found evidence that Leonardo da Vinci painted eyebrows and eyelashes in his early works. Cott claims that after creating an incredibly detailed close-up that magnified the face of Mona Lisa, he discovered a single brushstroke of a single hair above the left eye. The engineer asserts that more eyebrow hairs that might have appeared on the artwork may have faded or unintentionally been removed by imprecise cleaning efforts. Furthermore, according to Cott, his research revealed evidence showing that her hands were originally painted in a slightly different position than they are in the finished painting. The picture is described as having thick eyebrows in Giorgio Vasari's Lives of Painters. However, while this may indicate that the eyebrows and lashes were unintentionally removed, it could also indicate that Vasari did not have first-hand knowledge of the piece. The Landscape Behind Mona Lisa's figure, there is a highly naturalistic landscape where you can easily see a river surrounded by mountains and vegetation. At a closer glance, the viewer will easily notice the uneven landscape, with Mona Lisa in the middle of it, dividing it into two levels. There is such controversy surrounding the setting of the painting. Many believe it to be a Tuscan view, possibly the point where the Arno River sits in the Arezzo countryside in Tuscany. This belief, however, based on the apparent similarity of the bridge in the painting with the one crossing the river in Buriano, finds historians in disagreement among the most far-reaching hypotheses support the possibility that it might be a mixture of places visited by the painter during his travels and idealized here. In other words, a fantasy world. The 
the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. One might argue that the Mona Lisa painting is one of the most emblematic portraits in history. Also thanks to its location at the center of the most famous museum in the world, the Louvre, that counts millions of visitors every year. Commissioned in Italy by Mona Lisa's husband, Da Vinci began the painting in 1503, and the majority of the work on the painting continued until 1507. However, the painting never ended up in the Del Giocondo's family home. The Mona Lisa was Da Vinci's favorite painting, and he continued to add details here and there for the rest of his life. In 1517, Da Vinci went to France at the king's invitation and took the painting with him. He continued to work on the painting while in France. Upon his death on May 2, 1519, in Amboise, France, the artist's assistant Salai inherited the work and sold it to Francis King Francis I for 4,000 gold coins. It was kept in the palace at Fontainebleau, where it remained until King Louis XIV moved the painting to the palace at Versailles. Following the French Revolution, it was moved to the Louvre. The Theft The Mona Lisa disappeared from the Louvre Museum in 1911. After the Louvre announced the theft, newspapers all over the world ran headlines about the missing masterpiece, giving it unprecedented publicity and making it an instant sensation. Believe it or not, Pablo Picasso was on the original list of suspects questioned for the theft. For two years, the masterpiece was thought to be forever lost. However, in 1913, Vincenzo Perugia was arrested for stealing the famous painting and the original artwork returned to its home at the Louvre. Perugia had been an employee of the Louvre at the time of the theft and he believed the painting belonged to Italy. For two years, he kept the famous piece of art hidden in his apartment, but was discovered when he tried to sell the painting for the equivalent of 100,000 US dollars to a gallery in Florence, Italy. Before its theft, the Mona Lisa was not widely known outside the art world. Leonardo da Vinci painted it in 1507, but it wasn't until the 1860s that critics began to hail it as a masterwork of Renaissance painting. The Mona Lisa between ancient and modern tributes. The fame of the Mona Lisa has produced not only a vast amount of literature on the subject, but also imitations, tributes, and references. In antique times, first example paintings connected to Mona Lisa are the so-called Swiss Gioconda or Gioconda Weiselworth from the location of the nobleman's studio behind its purchase, portraying a younger woman than the well-known subject and attributed to Leonardo himself, and the Mona Lisa del Prado, which is considered the work of a disciple of the artist. In more recent times, Warhol, Botero, and Basquiat are just some of the best-known artists that have paid homage to this work in the most diverse ways within a long and fascinating list. Taking a leap forward into the immediate present, the tattooed version of the Mona Lisa created in 2020 by the Spanish artist Tatimunz has aroused a lot of following on social media and not only testimony to how the Mona Lisa's cultural legacy is unexhaustible and above all, timeless.